All right, so we were learning about color separation. To show you how that works in digital art, I have to use a professional software of Photoshop because in Photoshop, we have layers just like we have in PhotoP. But in PhotoP, what we do, we have channels in PhotoP. Let me see if I can change the mode. I can. So we've never really noticed those channels there that are in PhotoP, but these are how the computer sees our image. So these are the red lights that are turned on and off. And I think it's where they're turned white, that is where the light bulb is on the brightest. Where they're turned black, where it shows black, that's where the red lights are turned off the most. And then when you add it, green light into it, you see all that red and green mix to give us together. Which gives us a lot of yellow, the red and green. But also the reds. It starts to hint at blue. And then when you add full blue light, you get the pure white light. So now the white is actually white and not just yellow. If you add just the green and blue light together, this is what you get. And the computer just sees them as black and white pixels, as binary. And actually, that's not exactly right. It sees them as grayscale scale pixels, because those lights can be turned on at different percentages. Black is turned off. White is turned on. That's RGB mode. What if we change the mode and we go to image mode CMYK? What this does is this, if it does it, <laughs> will change how the computer sees the image. It will see the image like a printer sees the image. Image mode CMYK, yeah. And what you'll notice is when we switch it between those two, so that's RGB mode. Look at the brightness of the greens, of the yellows, of some of the oranges. And then if I take that mode and I switch it to CMYK, it takes out those fluorescents, right? And sure enough, our printers, no printers, can print fluorescent unless you use fluorescent ink. So CMYK actually makes the, the image quality a little bit worse, but closer to how it's going to print on a printer. And that's because if you go to channels, nope, let's see, that's what they don't do. But I can show you in Photoshop. So if you do the exact same thing, you take the... Uh, the RGB image, and we change it in mode to CMYK. Let's go ahead and flatten it. It's just a demo. Look at the difference. That's RGB. Ah. And there we go, that's CMYK. But now, if I go to channels, this is what I wanted to show you. Now the channels will actually show me what each of those inks are doing on the printer. So this is what my black ink is doing. This is what black with yellow is doing. This is what magenta with black and yellow is doing. So if I had a limited budget to print this poster, I might use those three inks, black, magenta, and yellow. And if I wanted full color, I would add in the cyan. The problem is, this isn't exactly how you print with ink. This is the computer showing how it thinks you would print with ink, which means that there's grayscale here. But to turn it into grayscale, I can't for a printer, because a printer doesn't thin out the inks like a light bulb can dim. So that's where you have to go back to the bin day dots and the color separation. It thins them out by separating them into these discrete dots. And it does that through this process. So if I wanted just the blacks, let's do it with something more interesting. Let's do it with the magentas. There's more there. So if I do it with just the magentas, the first thing I have to do is change it from CMYK mode to grayscale mode and it will lose all the color information. Oh, but before I do that, I actually need to delete these different channels. It's not enough just to have them turned, 
turned on or off. I have to delete them. So I'm going to delete everything but magenta. I'm just going to use magenta as the example. And you would do it for all four channels to get four different pieces of film for your printing. So now this is grayscale. I need to change it to grayscale to get rid of all the color information. And then I need to change it from grayscale to what's called bitmap mode. And they've changed that to now they call it multi-channel in Photoshop. That's a new change, which is interesting. Because then I need to get into the channel settings and say only two colors. Another way we can get to that so I can show you is to go to adjustments and go to posterize and say I only want it to have two levels. So this is what's called bitmap mode. Only black pixels, only white pixels. And notice, it doesn't make it look that good in certain places because it's taking things that are lighter than 50% and it's making them white. And it's taking things that are darker than 50% and it's making them black. So halftone dots work better than this random diffusion. And so let me just show you what I've built into to Photoshop to do this for me. I go back to my RGB and I flatten my image. And you can download these programs within Photoshop in the class Dropbox. And you can use them in your own version of Photoshop whenever you want to. But they are called actions. So if I go to Window Actions, you can download my actions. Photoshop comes with some default ones. All actions are, are programs within Photoshop. So I can program, I can create an action like a VHS tape. I can record what I do and then play it back on other programs. So I've made one for color separations. I'm going to select this VHS tape, the CMYK full run. I don't want to open up the VHS tape and play with these. These are all the commands. That would be like taking the magnetic tape out of the VHS. And that makes the Little Mermaid not work right. right. So instead, I'm going to select the tape and then I'm going to hit play. And all my actions are designed to work on flattened images that are the only thing open in Photoshop. And it will generate out the film work for you. So the cyan into halftone dots at 300 pixels per inch. The yellow, the magenta, the black. And then if you use the CMYK full run, it will do all four of those. But then it will also layer them all together just like you would in the order that you would print them into its own file. All my actions are non-destructive, so they don't overwrite the beginning file. So that's what I started with. This is what I ended with. This is how a newspaper would print this image. All right, what can I do with that? You can see all the dots, they layer up, they create what are called Gaussian roses. I can now take those, put them all in a folder, and I can bring this into PhotoP or anything else. These are just pixelated images. I don't think I can do this, but worth a try. No, that'd be way too easy. But I can do that in Photoshop. I can just take that group and move it onto here. onto my RGB image. And then, because my image is at 350 and my actions are set at 300, I just take that whole group and I transform it and I layer it on top, which is another reason why it's good to build a border into your image. And now, just like I did with that circle, I can play with the opacity, the blending mode, and integrate these printing artifacts into my image. Like so. 
and that references the ways they will really get printed. And it makes it look like kind of an older form of printing. Without it, with it. Right. That is color separation. So let's see it in practice. So this is how digital artists will use it now. They'll layer it on top of their digital art as a different way of mixing color. So everything with Wonder Woman here is just flat color, but her skin is done with color separation, a lot like a Lichtenstein painting from the 1960s, where the dots aren't separated, but they are dots, you know, and that mixes optically to give you a different color. Here's another modern illustration of Wonder Woman. Notice you have full bleed flat color in lots of it, but then for that skin tone, just to give it a little something extra, they take away the outline and they fill it with the halftone dots. In Into the Spider-Verse, they integrate this a lot into their animation because it references old comic books. So you start to see these halftone screens uh, just all throughout the film. And this is what's so cool about it. If I'm printing something that is gray, the printer is printing it with these colors. And it's doing these screens at these different angles so that it creates what are called Gaussian roses. So black is always at 45 degrees. Magenta is always at 75. Yellow is always at zero or 90 degrees. It's the same thing. And then cyan is always at 15 degrees or 105. It's the same thing. So that they all come together. The important thing to remember is that black is at 45 and nothing is within 30 degrees of black. If you don't do that, then you just get a brown mess when you try to print. So you have to separate them out. So this is it shown a different way. Yellow at zero, cyan at 15, black at 45, magenta at 75. That's how I learned it. Gives you all of these different kind of vintage printing approaches. So if you look back at our digital coloring primer, we learned everything on that assignment up to adding an offset border so it shows up on t-shirts and different backgrounds like your poster. The next step would be separating it into color separation. So this is your little cheat guide for those angles that you want to know and understand what that is. So this looks almost identical to this, but it will print better. And it actually has that little Gaussian dot texture to it. Okay. Now we're going to use that to make this print ready. So I feel like it's weird to do all that work to get these dots and not use them for anything. So let me find a blending mode that's acceptable. And I think uh, Pinlight does that. So that the dots are there, but they're really embedded in, in a way that doesn't distract. All right. And now, because I want to make it print ready, I'm going to say file, save as, just like I could do in photo P. And I'm going to save it as a PSD for myself. And I'm going to save it to the desktop. And then to print it, I'm going to say layer, flatten image. Put it all into one. File, save as, or export as. Put PR in front of it for print ready and you choose to save it as a TIFF file with LZW compression, that lossless compression format. You can do that from Photo P as well. Then I can close these. I don't need them. And I find that print ready file that's a TIFF that is flattened. Let me see what size it is. It's 118 megabytes. So we don't want it any extra than that, but my PSD with just those color separation layers is 344 megabytes. So flattening it in my instance gives it, it's a third of the size, right? And with no loss of quality. So you want to flatten your TIFF files. Then you go to the class Dropbox and you go to digital art class files, just like you did for your midterm to print. You go to flatten TIFF files to print. You find your folder with your name. And then here's mine. 